Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about firing people. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I hired a software developer and he doesn't seem to be able to solve problems when he gets stuck. Should I invest in training him or should I just fire him? Well, you're going to have to do a cost value analysis here. So if uh, if you look at the way that your business is structured now if you have si have a single software developer i mean if you uh, let's say for the sake of argument that you work uh, as part of uh, a very small company where you might just have a single developer or maybe one or two developers then you have to ask yourself well, how can what type of training can you offer because what i can tell you right now is that if your idea of training is that well, you're going to pay for some courses or you're going to, uh, I don't know, the, uh, g get this person some extra time to practice their coding skills. That's not going to be very sustainable for you because it usually takes a lot of time for you to deal with. You know, to, th th this is one of the reasons why quite a few companies don't want to hire juniors because it's really, really ex expensive and time consuming to train someone in the basic coding skills. So you really need to figure out what type of, like what level of coding skill do you need? If this person is on an average day good enough for you to get the job done, if the work has been progressing and they seem to have the skills to produce within your company, yes, then you can train them. But you really have to figure this out because if you've hired a, like a, a developer to do something, and they are not really able to produce the results that you are looking for, then train the, you won't be able to train that uh, because uh, it, well, uh, with I'm, I'm going to raise my finger. I'm going to say there is one thing you can do, but it really depends on your company structure. If you can put this person with another developer, say that you have someone who is a little bit more senior, or you that doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's senior, but if you can pair this pro programmer up with somebody else and they get a collaborate, you can get a collaboration type of thing going. You might see an improvement in performance because usually a pro a programmer who works completely alone and gets stuck can get unblocked fairly quickly if they have a partner. If you have, yeah, I, I will even go as far as to say I think that the minimum size of any software team is going to be two. That's the mini, mini, minimum unless uh, nothing else is possible. Ideally, you should be three people to get a little bit of fault tolerance in there because if there's just two people, if one gets sick, eh, it's not a good thing. So you, you really need to, to, to figure that part out because if uh, the issue is for you that you don't really have a way to get this person to work with somebody else or shadow somebody or have a, collabor a collaboration type of thing going and at the same time they don't or they don't really have the base coding skills and you figure that out by just looking at it or when they get stuck is that a very very common thing does it happen a few times does it happen all the time because if it's happening all the time it's likely that they are not good enough to work in your company and then you have to fire them because it's you're not it takes it can take years to train a software developer up to the level they might need to be in order to survive in a company and you could of course pay for that education but it's not gonna it's, it's not gonna work if they're at the same time working alone you would have to put them in a team of senior developers where they can shadow and like take uh, take uh, on tasks that might be more suitable to their level so what I think that you should really consider is if you want to train this person, like start out, try to figure out, uh, go and talk to them. It's uh, the Talking usually helps. Just go and talk to them and explain very, in a, I mean, this is not going to be fun for anybody to hear, but you can say it in many ways and you should pick the one that is uh, suitable for you. But in essence, you have to tell this person that uh, you see that this person is struggling in this uh, with the with the work that is being requested. You see you see that the output of this person is below expectations, and then l just hear what they have to say. Just to try to get their feeling for it. Like just have an open dialogue. Try to figure out like what, what uh, do you have any thoughts on how we can make your improve uh, make you improve? How can we get you up to a level? The, the, the sort of level that we need and then you'll see if they're open to training and that, then consider the things that I just said.
try to see and figure out is is the issue a specific tool like that they have like that there are some things that you're doing in the company that is really hard for them to understand and if that is the case can we address that and see if there's an improvement uh, is there a way for us to pair you up with someone who is uh, like really knowledgeable or is there a way for us to restructure the work so that you're more productive because at the end you, you, all of this has to be I'm not saying that you should just blindly do this you can you have to do the cost value analysis because uh, the thing that you're fighting is the, the decision I would say the decision that you are fighting as the business owner I'm assuming in this case or the manager is uh, at what point is it more is it is it more is it cheaper and more sustainable for me to get a replacement developer versus training this individual because there is a there is a cost to both and you have to pick the one that is right for you you can invest and train this person and ideally you should do this if they already have so if they because if you've already invested in them it's usually cheaper if it's possible to help to train them or to give them some uh, some guidance so that they can get up to a productive level because they will improve that's not not in question the question is are they going to improve to the point like how how much is the cost of making that creating that improvement versus getting somebody new and then you of course also have to consider firing someone well if you fire someone and if you're in a company uh, firing someone always has an effect sometimes it's a big loss to the company or people feel very strongly about it or it creates uncertainties in the workplace and those emotional types of things those are also things that you need to consider when you're firing somebody but in, and in some cases it's fairly a fairly straightforward process you have to figure out how your company is working and the people and the dynamics of that company and that environment but basically I would say that start by doing that have a discussion see if you can figure out where the issues are and if the issues are that they sometimes get stuck because they don't really understand how this and that works try to pair them up with somebody uh, if the problem is more fundamental than that you have to evaluate because uh, if you can put them in a in a coaching type of situation and if that's not po possible uh, if you you're not able to do that I would say fire them then the, you you then it's not their fault it's just that you need a developer that is further along in their career than they are and since they can't produce they need to go to a company it's much better for them to be put in a company where they can actually work on tasks that are more to their level so what I want you to take away from this is that if you're dealing with a programmer who gets stuck some issues and can't can progress you need to figure out if this is due to the fact that they are working on tasks that are beyond them because the fact of the matter is that there is a very big difference between say a really fresh junior developer and a senior developer that's what they're getting they, that's what the pay difference is all about some programmers are not at the level they need to be to do the work that you want to be done in the company and that is a very tricky thing because it's hard for someone who's non-technical to figure out what level of skill do I need for my developer to do this job and sometimes you overshoot it and you get someone who's really really good and you pay them a lot of money for stuff that like anybody could do and sometimes you undershoot it and you get this uh, ineffective scared little uh, junior who can't really do the job and in in the in this sort of scenario you need to figure out is it because there are some specific issues that we can resolve together or is it more fundamental like they just don't have enough experience like it's they have much more learning to do before they are ready to take on a role such as the one that you're, you're putting them in and by just having a conversation with them and trying to say is see if they're receptive and say well can we work on these issues and see how things improve create an action plan of improvement for them and if that doesn't work out or if it's un unfeasible for you to put them together with a more senior experience or so forth then you have to get rid of them because at the end of the day you uh, you have to have someone who is able to produce the results it's not your fault that the problem that you have is advanced or so advanced that you can't give a that this person can't handle it it's not their fault that they haven't they don't have the experience they need to work on the problem and then finally it's better for them to actually be in an environment where you can where they can learn and grow next to other senior developers and if your company cannot afford that or it's structured in a way where you can't can't provide that 
that's nobody's fault. Your company is what your company is, and this person is at the skill level they are. It's better to go your separate ways, and then maybe in the future you can come back to. Uh, they can come back either when they are better, or when your company has grown, or you have a different way of working where they might actually be able to get the coaching that they actually need to perform at the level that you need them to perform. Have a great day.